Hi, my name is Tin, and today we are going to talk about system suitability test in HPTLC. As an analytical chemist, when your analysis is complete and before processing your data, how do you know that your test has gone well? Could you confirm that your system, instrument and method combination works within the predefined limits? That's why a system stability test is commonly used by laboratories to ensure that the complete analytical system, including instrument, solvent and analyst, is suitable for the intended application. Today, we will first look at the current system suitability test used in HPTLC. We will talk about its definition in the European Pharmacopoeia and the USP and their limitation. We will see how the, the idea of the universal SHC rises and how the universal HPTLC mix was developed. Finally, we will look at his usability. What is the role of the system suitability test in HPTLC? In HPTLC, each plate represents a new analytical system. That's why the SST is performed on each plate each time an analysis is executed. In that case, the SST shall verify that the analytical method was suitable for the intended purpose the day it was performed. Until now, the SST is specific for an individual method, including predefined limits. If the SST fails, the data obtained for the sample is not valid and no evaluation can be done. Because the SST shall detect all deviations, the first thing to know are the critical parameters in HPTLC. The first parameter is the plate. From the plate, you have different suppliers, such as Merck or Nagel, for example. Then you have different types of plate, for example, the reverse phase plate, the amino plate, the dual plate, or the cyano plate. Beside the plate, during the development, many parameters are influencing the illusion. Inside the chamber, the relative humidity of the air and the degree of saturation of the chamber will have an influence on the RF value. Another important parameter is the developing solvent. Depending if the developing solvent is done properly or not, the RF value will be compliant. When we look at the system suitability test in official HPTLC method, the USP used the SST to check the suitability of the system for resolution, position and color of the band and consists of two or more reference substances that have similar but just separable error value under the chromatographic condition to be used. Here, the example of the sun transport. In the monograph, the system suitability is checked on the standard solution C, which is their reference extract. They look at the lower third section where two yellowish-orange fluorescent bands corresponding to the band due to the rutin and iperoside. Then, in the third section of the chromatogram, two red fluorescent bands due to the pseudo hypericin and hypericin are clearly separated. For the European pharmacopoeia, the SST is based on the separation of two substances that have similar RF value, but are barely separable under the specified chromatographic condition. The same example here is used, the sun transport. In that case, the chromatogram shows two distinct zones in the lower third, which may however be partially overlapping. The lower zone chlorogenic acid shows a light blue fluorescence and the upper zone corresponding to the hyperoside shows a yellow or orange fluorescence. When we look at both definitions, they both describe separation within a specific region of the chromatogram. You have here for the, the USP, and you have here for the European Pharmacopoeia. Then another problem is that for each method, a new system suitability test is developed. Here, for example, you have different acceptance criteria for different monograph. So if laboratories are applying many different HPTLC methods, the procurement of chemical reference substances required for the SST may add significant cost to routine analysis. The development and validation of different set of SSTs is also time-consuming. Knowing that, 
Recent approaches aim at the use of standardized chromatographic system targeting a class of substances such as the flavonoid and the plant acid, and, for example, here the essential oil. A recent set of SST and specific markers were proposed for the analysis of essential oil. Because most of the essential oils are analyzed with the same developing solvent, toluene ethyl acetate 955, the SST consists of isogenol and isogenyl acetate. For the specific markers, two sets are developed, linalol and linalyl acetate for the violet zone, and borneol and bornyl acetate for the orange zone. Even if this approach is more general, it is still focused on the method and depending on the developing solvent. Because of that, our distributor Ancrom in India wanted to have a more practicable solution for qualifying the HPTLC result in routine analysis. The idea of developing a general SST for the HPTLC rises with a different and more holistic approach allowing to qualify the entire RF range of an HPTLC chromatogram. For the development of the universal HPTLC mix, the project started with the selection of substances. For that, a selection was done from a list of more than thousands of substances. Substances has to be of minimal hazard, not harmful, non-toxic to humans and unproblematic for the environment. It has to be detectable without derivatization in white light or UV 254 nanometers or UV 366 nanometers, stable, easily available and inexpensive. From that, 24 organic substances were selected. The second step of the investigation was the chromatographic behavior of 24 substances on HPTLC plate with 20 different developing solvents covering a wide range of polarity and selectivity. At the end, eight substances have been selected. Guanosine, silosyl, benzone, timidine, paracetamol, phthalimide, hydroxyfluorine, tioxanthon, and the two benzotriazole tetramine methyl butyl phenol. Here are the different fingerprints with the selected mixture. We can see that the selection achieves an even distribution of at least 3 to 4 zones. After the selection of the substance, the response characteristic was evaluated. The activity of silicate gel as adsorbent is affected by the relative humidity of its surroundings. The example shown illustrates a case in which the relative humidity affect the selectivity of each substance differently, as a decreasing or increasing RF. The response characteristic of the UHM clearly detects when the activity of a plate deviates from that expected from adjusting to relative humidity of 0.5%, 33%, 75% or 90%. This can, for example, happen if the wrong activation procedure was employed. A plus minus 10% variation of each constituent solvent was applied to the composition of developing solvent toluene ethyl acetate 9010. HPTLC fingerprints obtained with the UHM show significant responses. The same developing solvent was tested with different configuration of saturation. Unsaturated, partially saturated, so it means 20 minutes without saturation pad, and saturated, so 20 minutes with saturation pad. The results show that the RF value are increasing with partial saturation, then decrease with the full saturation. The UHM allowed the detection of a general influence of the saturation. Then the UHM performance was evaluated in the intra and inter laboratory test based on the delta RF in three developing solvent. In the intra-laboratory test, the delta RF of 0.029 was obtained and 0.040 for the inter-laboratory test. As mentioned previously, a critical parameter in the chromatographic system is the plate material. 
Due to different specification of the silica shell, for example different binders or the presence of the fluorescence indicator, different plates with silica shell may have different selectivity. Six different types of plate coated with silica gel were evaluated with the UHM and the same developing solvent ethyl acetate, formic acid, acetic acid water. The track 1 done on Merck HPTLC glass plate is used as reference. Between HPTLC plates of Merck, glass or aluminium, only a change in RF is visible for the four zone of the UHM with their RF value outside of the confidence interval. The Merck TLC plate exhibit clearly more diffuse zones compared to the HPTLC plate and also give different RF value for most of the UHM zone. With different plate from Macri and Nagel, for example the Nano Adamant, the Nano Zil or the Nano Durazil, all plates give different RF value for most of the UHM zone. In order to see whether the UHM could be considered as an alternative SST, a comparison is done between the UHM and the current SST used in the standard methods for the identification of essential oils. In the standard method, isoeugenyl acetate and isoeugenol are described as SST. As specific markers, the set linalol and linalyl acetate or borneol and bornyl acetate are used. In this example, three essential oils were also tested. Peppermint oil, lavender oil and nutmeg oil. In order to see if the UHM could be an alternative to the current SST, their prediction interval should be of the same range. For the case of the essential oils method, for each component of the UHM and the current SST, the average RF value and their prediction intervals were calculated. Their prediction intervals were compared and the data show that the intervals obtained for the component of the UHM are in the same range as those of the original SST. As mentioned before, the variation of plus minus in the composition of the developing solvent bring measurable change to the position of the component of the UHM. When looking at the UHM and the developing solvent toluene ethyl acetate, the result showed that by adding more toluene or more ethyl acetate, the component of the UHM can detect all the changes. Concerning the current SST and specific markers, when a variation of plus minus 10% in the composition of the developing solvent is tested, the same observation as for the UHM is done. No matter if there is more toluene or more ethyl acetate, the component of the current SST and specific markers can detect all the changes. When looking at zone from the essential oil sample, the data show the same observation. For the peppermint oil, in both cases, adding toluene or ethyl acetate will be detected. The same observations are done for the lavender oil and for the nutmeg oil. How to use the UHM as SST in vision cats? In the SST tab, the first step is to define the SST and label the zone. Then select the detection mode and fill the table with the RF values and delta obtained during the method development. When the parameters are defined, select automatic check and the software is then detecting if zones are present in the specified range. So today we have seen that the universal HPTLC mix is a good alternative to current SSTs. The mixture of eight components of different polarities and chemical classes is of a low price, stable, and has a good response for the change in the validated chromatographic system. When comparing to current SSTs, the component of the UHM shows similar prediction interval as the substances of established SSTs and specific markers. The UHM can detect changes in developing solvent gradients or saturation effect, whereas many established SSTs generally describe only a limited RF range. 
If you want to learn more about the UHM, please look at our two articles published in the Journal of Chromatography A.